it. Uh, you also call it a bombisha or? Uh... Yeah, bombisha. <laughs> <laughs> Argentinian uh, mate. <laughs> uh, she didn't know that's popular also in Lebanon. Yeah, it's uh, popular among my community actually, specifically in Lebanon. Ah, yeah, the Druze community. Yeah, yeah true. Oh. Appar apparently, Cristiano Ronaldo is also a big fan, or who, or was it Messi? I think everyone from South America knows Messi. <laughs> that would be Messi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, so, so how, how you're so all many good. Hours. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. What what time is it now in Argentina? Uh, four p.m. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So five so five hours difference. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, two minutes before the video rolls, so we still have a, a bit of time so to, to relax. I am relaxed. <laughs> exactly. Once it starts, I'm going to be like uh, oh. a little bit <laughs> nervous, but not not until it starts. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, the device that you were showing, that Kinect, uh, it's, it's something Kinect. special for mine. Oh, OK. It's, it's a, yeah, it's a follow up from the uh, the connect for Windows and the connect that came with the Xbox 360. Ah, initially. okay, yeah, yeah, that long bar, you mean? That uh, this is the, the short long one. bar. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm actually doing some tests with it because I still don't figure out how how to work with it, how to use all the sensors that have come mm. with it. Yeah. Oh, nice. How much sensors. does it cost? Uh... Uh, I think it's four hundred US dollars. Yeah, something like that. Okay, Three ninety nine or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Yes. I do not have a Hololens yet. Mm. Not They're, my own. Well, they are too expensive. <laughs> those are expensive still. Yes, and the two was pretty hard to get. Uh, the version still? two of the Hololens. Yeah. Uh, they opened it up, but still, it's uh, there was so much demand. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, just wait for version three. <laughs> <laughs> Think so. Yeah. Uh, okay, we got fifteen more seconds before the video starts to roll. So. Okay. Well, I will remove myself from uh, from this one here. So, best of luck, Ivana. Thank you. And so uh, I'll give the cue here in the private chat. So uh, Chris, you can you can then take it from there to introduce. Oh, uh, okay. Good luck. Thank you. Bye bye, Nick. We'll be online with the mat. <clears throat> okay. Okay, good evening, everyone watching. So now we have our new host, uh, our new speaker, Ivana from Argentina, who yes, loves sir. and enjoys her mate, and has <laughs> actually a, a really cool Star Wars, some uh, R2-D2 uh, at her back. So great choice, <laughs> great choice. So <laughs> and she's going to talk all about like making your mixed reality application uh, with AI and cognitive services. Enjoy. Thank you, Chris. OK, guys, so welcome. Uh, I don't know if you can see already my PowerPoint. As 
Chris just mentioned, my name is Ivana. I am from Argentina. I'm actually a Microsoft MVP for artificial intelligence. I also work as a quality manager in the company that you are seeing on the screen, which is 3XM Group. We provide software development services all over the world. So please feel free to follow me on Twitter or contact me through my mail if by any chance you or your company need help from us. So let's begin. Okay. So let's talk a little bit of our agenda for today. Uh, for those who have no experience with mixed reality, the content we will cover today will be uh, a bit of, a little bit simple, but we are trying to get deeper into, into AI with mixed reality. But you will be able to understand everything. I will start showing how different companies today are working with mixed reality development and also some numbers of the impact of taking this approach. Then we will talk about the tools, frameworks, hardware, everything available today. And then I will start to explain a demo I created for today, which uh, will cover some of the cognitive services available from Azure. Uh, and we will consume those services from our mixed reality app. And finally, I would like to close with some research that are being done today uh, with mixed reality and machine learning. So you can take a look up what the future holds for everything in uh, mixed reality. So. This is one of the examples I wanted to show you. So Microsoft started uh, the, the journey with Packard five years ago. They started with HoloLens 1, what was once fiction is today a reality. Today, mixed reality is no longer a vision of the future, a prototype or a proof of concept. Today, most of the top 500 Fortune companies have purchased HoloLens 2 and are moving from pilot to scale deployment of their solutions. So in these videos, you can see it's being used in factory. It helped reduce 80% in training time for all the employees. This is one of the benefits that are used for mixed reality. Then we have another area, which is uh, the education area, where Case Western Reserve University used mixed reality to teach anatomy classes to, to improve students' learning. So using HoloLens in a control study, they were able to increase knowledge retention by 150%. And finally, let's take Airbus. This company has partnered with Microsoft to use Azure Mixed Reality and HoloLens 2 as a way to accelerate the design and manufacture of aircraft while increasing safety and functionality and ensuring professional development opportunities for employees Airbus is using Azure Mixed Reality to unlock the full potential of HoloLens 2. Okay, so maybe if you don't have a, a HoloLens 2, you can see that or maybe think that this is pretty far away for us to start developing, but actually that's not right. So you are seeing an example I created with what we call the Mixed Reality Toolkit, which is a set of tools that Microsoft provides, which is cross-platform. So I created this sample for my company. This example is using uh, iOS and it's also using Android. So I actually didn't, didn't have a mix, uh, HoloLens 2 device but it was, I was able to create this application. Great. So before getting into the code, let's talk about the different development tools and development frameworks that we have today. Over the last six months, uh, Epic has released Unreal 4.25, which is the last version. It brings MRTK and Azure Special Anchor and a preview of, of OpenXR. Unity also released uh, 2019 which is the one that we will be working today that supports our foundation. As you saw, I use it for, uh, uh, for the application I just saw. Uh, it also supports the new XR plugin systems and also works with the MRTK Preview 2.4, which is the one that we are going to be using today. So MRTK is a Microsoft-driven GitHub project that provides a set of components and features used to accelerate cross-platform mixed reality development in either Unity or Unreal. It provides us with a building blocks for mixed reality development across many different headsets. As I mentioned, the last recently released version is 2.4. And finally, 
we have StereoKit, which is another open source mixed reality library, where in this case, StereoKit is about building HoloLens and virtual reality applications easily with a bit of C Sharp and of course, OpenXR. Okay, so what about web support? Recently, Microsoft announced um, the launch of Firefox Reality with Babylon WebXR support for HoloLens 2. So that's a pretty interesting platforms to take a look at. As I mentioned, we will work with the Mixed Reality Toolkit version 2.4, sorry. If you are going to develop for universal Windows platform, basically uh, you will need the Windows Mixed Reality HoloLens 1 or HoloLens 2 kit. And uh, then you need to install Windows SDK. I will be working with Unity 2019, Visual Studio 2019, and it's optional to install the emulators for mobile device or also for uh, HoloLens 2, which is also which all, there is also an emulator available today. So the mixed reality team, as I mentioned, wanted to create a cross-platform solution with, with performance that ensures that every time you run your project, you get the same level of performance you need from each one of the solutions you create. So what we are going to be building today uh, is going to be uh, easy to port to different platforms. So um, I don't know if the, the audience, I have a lot of developers, but it's not as simple to understand how to develop a mixed reality application from Unity if you don't have a game development background. But I will try to explain it as easy as possible. So let's talk a bit. Uh, let's talk. A, let's talk. Sorry about the packages that we have. So Unity works uh, with packages that contain all the necessary uh, information and and files that we need to run our application. So the mixed reality toolkit is divided into different packages. There is one that is the main one, which is the foundation package. It includes the main components necessary to create the mixed reality application. Then we have optional packages like the extensions that include additional services that extend the functionality of the kit, such as physical support, small scenes, transitions, among others. The, then we have another package which is called the tool packages that includes useful tools that enhance the development experience. And finally, we have the example package. I will be using it today. Uh, the, this one brings demonstration projects that illustrate characteristics of the kit. So you have different uh, already pre-built uh, holograms and scenes that we are going to talk a lot about our scenes today uh, that you can already see how they are built and you can learn from that. So in case you are developing for mobile devices, like in this case, I show you the map, it was for iOS and Android, you should incorporate the different packages that are necessary. For example, our foundation, our kit or our core, depending on the platform that you choose. I will show a little bit how to do that. And finally, so we have this uh, set of tools that, that involves uh, the mixed reality development. And then we have what, AI brings to all this development, which is the Azure Cognitive Services. So my favorite topic, AI. So as I mentioned, Microsoft provides cognitive services to help developers build intelligent apps. This group of services include more than two dozen apps that offer human capabilities, that offer human capabilities to hear, see, talk, among others. So in this session, I will cover speech recognition and voice commands whatever you want to call it, which are tools to understand and recognize speech. I will also take a look at a little bit at uh, Lewis. I don't know if you guys heard of it, but we will see what it's involving in Lewis later on. So we have different options to interact with your mixed reality app. Voice is one of the key forms of input, which is included by default in the Marty game. It allows you to directly command hologram uh, without having to use hand gestures. So voice input is powered by the same engine that supports speech in all the other universal Windows apps. On HoloLens, speech recognition will always function in the Windows display language configured in settings. That's important to understand. So we have different options to use speech without consuming cognitive services. One of that is dictation mode. And the other one is voice command mode. So we are going to see a little bit of it 
both of them today. Dictation mode basically allows the, allows the user to record the audio based on what they speak, and then it will convert that into a transcription text. The main use can be dictating an email or message, or in this case, we are going to use it with Luis. Then we have the voice command, which uh, are sort of set of words forming or a command like making a call, for example, turn off the lights or close the app. So that this is more like for a small set of words. Okay, so why should I use speech cognitive services is if I already said that uh, some speech interactions are already prevailed in mixed reality toolkit. Basic, basically, let me show you. Cognitive service speech can improve our mixed reality app in many ways. We can use speech to text, text to speech, which allows you to build apps and services that speaks to user naturally, improving accessibility and usability. We can convert text to audio in real time, play it back or save it for later to use it as a file. You can use neural text to speech to make interaction with chatbots and virtual assistants. And you can also convert digital text such as ebooks into audiobooks, and you can use it to enhance navigation systems as one of the many examples. And last but not least, speech translations. The speech translation, sorry, the speech translator, let, one second. The speech translator will help you communicate with different persons from all over the world that don't have the ability to understand what your application is trying to transmit. So uh, basically the idea is that the, the goal that the main power that your app mix application will gain is to reach more people uh, and in different languages. So this is the demo that we are going to be doing today one second until it shows up okay so we have here uh, a small demo that is already prevailed in the example mrtk that i show you and i also created a panel in that panel you can see different buttons one of them it's going to translate what we are talking about the other one is going to hear what we are talking about and the other one it's going it's going to call uh luis for us to get uh information on what we are talking about and we also have the possibility to interact with the different holograms uh with the speech cognitive services that we are going to be using so basically this is the demo that i'm going to explain today Great, well, give me one second, let's go to the app. So, I hope you guys are seeing my screen. Yes, perfect. So what we have here, this is the, the Unity UI. And what I did first, first of all, I created my project, but then I set it up, I prepared it, sorry, to run for universal Windows platform, which is the one that is going to run in my HoloLens device. Okay, so once I have already set up for it to build and work on HoloLens, the next thing that I did was to import the packages that I already mentioned in the, in the slide. So I have the packages in here. I'm not going to import them, but these are the packages. So remember that the one that we need for uh, uh, the application to work perfectly with mixed reality is the foundation package. So, so once we import this package, it will appear in here as the MRTK. All the asset information that you have in here are the files that, are, that belong to your application. So now we have the MRTK, which also will add this option at the top of my UI that says Mixed Reality Toolkit. So this option, as you can see, can add a scene and configure to my application. If I want to add a scene to my application, let's do it. It will create these three items in here, a directional light, a mixed reality toolkit, and a play space. So it's 
the, what the Mixed Reality 2 Kid is doing here is preparing the entire scene for everything that we are going to develop from now on will run perfectly on our device. And if you select in here, you can see one of the key important things, which is the different profiles that run with the Mixed Reality Toolkit. As you can see in here, you can create applications for HoloLens 1, HoloLens 2, and Mixed Reality Toolkit, uh, Mixed Reality applications for the Windows devices. So in this case, as you can see, I have a speech basic profile and I also have an Android profile. So it means that I created a copy of the HoloLens 2 profile and I have, and I edited, edited to put some specific configuration for each one of the devices or each one of the scenarios I want the applications to run it. If I click on the, the HoloLens 2 profile, you can see that this one doesn't let me configure any of the items. You can see that everything is closed in here. So in order to, for me to be able to edit one of the profiles, I have to clone it. So once I click on the button clone, it will let me, let's try a test. It will help me uh, clone the profile and then I will be able to clone all the necessary profiles that are on top of that one I just copied. So for example, if I want to create the one with the camera, let's say I want the application to run on an Android device. So I could select, a, I could clone this one as just I did with the other one, or I could use an Android device uh, configuration I already have. If you click on it here, you will see that I have the Unity Art Foundation camera settings, which is preparing all the applications to be ported to Android and I don't need to do anything else. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with Speech Basic. Speech Basic is a profile I cloned from the HoloLens 2 profile. And then in here, I made some changes, not to the camera, but to the input area. So it's important to understand why I made, sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> so why did I did a change in the input, in the input of the application. So if we are consuming uh, Azure Cognitive Services, we are, sorry guys, we are going and back to the cloud and we want to be able to uh, have control of the information that we are sending to the cloud versus the one that we don't want to send. So in this case, I'm going to tell to my application in the speech area that I want to start manually when the application is going to start uh, hearing me. So uh, by default, HoloLens is hearing you the entire time. So you can just click on manual uh, configuration and speech for you uh, manage the application to just hear what you exactly want it to hear. Once I copy uh, the speech, once I clone, sorry, the profile, I set it to manual. So now I have the possibility to start when the application is going to hear, is hear me from code behind. Okay, so now that that is explains what we have in here. So what I have in here is a panel that contains different uh, items. I have the logo of the company that's mainly just for design reasons. And I have the translation panel, which contains a text on, on inside of it, okay? Then I have a connection light, which is going to tell me if I'm connected to the, to the Azure Cognitive Service or not. And then I have the button speak. That's it, that's the only thing I have. I, I'm going to grow the application with you. I'm going to start adding things with you guys so you can see how this, this one is implemented. And instead of adding uh, each one of the events to each one of the bottoms, I'm going to create one single class, which is this one. Well, let's open it up. So I have this simple class that is going to handle the speech service API key and the speech service region. So I'm going to code all the in, uh, artificial intelligence necessary for my applications to connect with uh, with with Azure Cognitive Services in this one CS file. What I'm going to do here is I'm going. Let's 
close this up so you can see which one. So this is the controller that I just showed you that has the service API and the region. Now, before adding this, you need to import the cognitive services. So usually in Visual Studio, we go out and import the Nugget package and that's it. We have the Nugget package, then we instantiate, instantiate the, the library and that's it. But in Unity, things don't work that way. We could uh, import the Nugget package in here, but the team, uh, Microsoft team is working a lot and is helping us do things even easier. So there is a package, uh, sorry, this one, which you can see is a cognitive service speech, 1.11. So this package already includes all the necessary information, plugins for your applications to run on Android, iOS, and HoloLens. So once I imported that package, I already can work with the speech cognitive services as if I was in Visual Studio. So now let's go back in here. Now that I imported, I can already consume the services. So what I have in here in my panel, I have two variables in here, which are uh, getting, one is getting the API key and the other one is getting the region of the, of the service I have. Um, this is simple as pitch services created in the portal in Azure. And then in here, that's going to receive the information to connect to our uh, cloud service, okay? Then it's going to go through all the necessary information to connect it. Now, what happens once I connect? I need to start using it. And the first thing I want to do in here is to be able to hear uh, and type what I'm speaking to the application. So in this case, I have a button, which is button speak, right? You can see it in here. And uh, I created in my panel, I also have a script, which is the speech recognizer. Okay. so. In this case, I'm going to select uh, a language in which I'm going to be talking to my application. The, in this situation, the application is not going to detect which language I am going to be talking to it. Instead, it's going to just uh, hear the language and accept that I'm going, in this case, I'm going to be speaking in English. So once it's, it connects, it goes to the same way that you guys are working with, uh, with AI in Visual Studio. So basically it creates a config that goes to the service API key uh, with the language that you're providing and it goes and, and recognize what you're speaking and is returning the information. That's it. Uh, now, this is returning the information to this controller, right? And where do I set this controller? I set it in here. So now I have the object references. So I have a canvas, which is the father of all the controls that I'm going to be handled, handling here. Then I have the connection light, which is going to tell me if the, the service is connected or not. And then I will have the button speak, uh, which is this one that I have in here. And that's it. Once I have the button speak, I have the text in which I'm going to be returning the, the information that the service is providing. And everything is set up. I could start talking to my application. So I'm going to run this in Unity. Let's say that I want to run this on HoloLens 2. Uh, it's exactly the same. It's going to request that uh, I give access to the, to the microphone. But one thing to understand here, I don't have a HoloLens 2, as I mentioned at the beginning of the of the chat. What I do have in here is the power of Unity running on uh, Windows. So I can interact with my button and I can go to the cloud. As you can see, the light is green. So I'm already connected to my uh, cognitive services. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start speaking to my application. And that's it. The application is already consuming services and there's no more magic than that. You already guys know how to program uh, and you can see it keeps on going and it keeps on going until I said stop. 
Once I say stop, it's no longer going to the cloud. Did you guys understand which, why it's important to put a manual start to the application? Just it is important because you are consuming the services the entire time. Unless you, of course, need to do it, you, it's important for you to have control on it. But that's okay if I want to speak to the application. Let's say I want the application to close. Let's say I want the, the let's, let's say we are developing um, something for a company for, um, that works with engines and we want the, the engine to increase or decrease. We can talk to the applications only with this one. It's, it will understand. And if you want to sell that application to another country, you will just need to change the language that the, the, the application is going to be hearing. But what happens if I want, let's say, to make a call with someone, uh, let's say like Skype in which I need the other a uh, person from the other side of the screen or for the others from the other side of the HoloLens to uh, understand what I'm speaking. And not only that, what if I want to understand what the other person is talking to me and we don't speak the same language? So in that case, that's where when the importance of translation comes into the picture. So in here, I just uh, enabled the button translate. And in my panel, I already have the library transcript translation recognizer. So if I open it up, what we will see, translation recognizer, is exactly the same that we had in the speech recognition. We had the from language, but we could also, we also could assign which one is the language to we are trying to translate. So in this case, I already have set up some uh, languages which is going to be uh, understanding the application, but they are not in here, right? So I created, uh, one second, so I can show you guys. Okay. So I created in here three languages, Russian, German, and Chinese. So I want the application to translate what I'm speaking to those, this, to those languages. So what I'm going to be doing from our Unity application, I'm going to select which one of the languages that I want to translate. Let's say I want, I hope this doesn't, uh, one second, I hope this doesn't break down because lately I had a problem with the, um, so I, I'm just trying to add another language. Let's try this out. So I'm trying to. Okay, so I'm adding Spanish to my translation. So if I save this up and this finger cross that my computer doesn't hate me today. <laughs> so this is uh, saving up and it will update my UI in Unity, hopefully without problems. And I will now have the option Spanish in here. So we will translate everything to Spanish. So, so you guys know that I didn't have this prepared. So, okay. So um, now what I'm going to be speaking, if I click on the button uh, translate, it's going to translate everything that I'm speaking to in Spanish. Then we can try to, to test and to Chinese on any other language. And as you saw as code behind, I only have the uh, from languages, which is the one I'm speaking. I created the config file and I'm, add, I'm add, adding the target language to which I'm translating. So, and that's it. As again, I'm retrieving, retrieving everything in my panel. So hopefully this will work out. Just fingers crossed. And okay, it's connected. It's again connected. So if I click on the translate button, I will start speaking in English and it will translate to Spanish. Awesome, yes. So as you can see guys, uh, it keeps on translating until I press stop. Okay, so as you can see, we just added the translation. So the scenarios in which you could apply these are huge. 
let's say you can right now that in the situations that we are facing right now it's important to have uh the, the, the communication to be clear and to be able to the the distance not to be an issue and let's say you have uh, your company have people working in china and you need suddenly two people to communicate with each other or to send information to, uh, to each other you can see that by using uh, a device a hololens device that could communicate uh right in real time and then we have this other um scenario which is louis okay how's the time i'm doing okay so what i have here is already uh i already created the martike demo speech for you to see what i have here is an intent of press button so if i click in here i have different uh, indications i'm saying to the Louis service. So in this case, as you can see, it says, for example, press reset button. So I'm, got, I'm trying to give instructions to my uh, application. So time to reset the experience, press the reset button. I need a hint, push the explore button. So I'm indicating which, in here which one is the action, which one is the target. Of course, that that those are entities I already created. And then, um, then I have the population of the uh, endpoint in here. So I'm going to be working with this. So I wanted to show you guys how you could consume also uh, not just straightforward indications, but you can learn from what or understand from what the, the user is talking to the application. So in here, I'm going to be adding the button Louis. Uh, yep. And I'm going to be adding the Louis panel for you to understand what I'm trying to explain. So what am I doing here? When I click on the Louis button and I speak to the application, this the application is going to hear me, but at the same time, it's going to send that information to Louis for it to predict and give score to the different information I am speaking. So for that, I have the lunar intent recognizer, which is this one this class i have in here so let me go to the important area so what i have in here uh i have my endpoint i i'm sending my query string i'm using that was one of the important thing that i needed you to understand from the beginning we talk about the detection recognizer so i'm i'm making my applications to create uh a, a string from what i'm speaking and it's sending that string to my endpoint. And it's going to be uh, displaying that information, the, re the result of that information in my panels for, for you to understand. And we're going to, un to see what's, uh, how the result is in impacted in the, in the panel, in the Louis panel. So let's take this out. Okay. So it's getting a little bit heavier. Hopefully it's not hating me today, guys. So how, what could I um, accomplish with this? So by obtaining the different score of the things that I'm speaking to the application, I could learn of what the user is trying to say. I, 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 it's not necessary for me to strictly, oh my gosh, this is going to be a problem, I think. Guys, give me one second. My computer does this all the time. Yep, I think so. Okay, guys, one second. Okay, I will try to reset this up. And before doing that, um, I will continue showing the rest of the demo I have. And then I will show you the demo again, so don't worry. But I need my computer to be back. Okay, so let me share something with you guys. Now, it's a pleasure to be here. 
How are you guys? in Las Vegas to present to you. It isn't always easy for me to travel across the world. And even when I do, I can't always speak the local language. Well, what if neither language nor distance mattered for me to deliver a fantastic keynote? What if technology could help me be anywhere I needed to be and speak any language I wanted? Well, it can. We are bringing together the power of mixed reality and Azure AI services to create a truly game-changing experience. First, let me introduce you to Mini-Me. There she is, my perfect holograph. And thanks to the power of HoloLens 2, she just floats right with me. I'm literally holding my hologram, so natural. Now she's a little small, to do a keynote. So let's get her up so she can do full-size Japanese keynote, render keynote. To do this, we use mixed reality technology to create my hologram and render it here live. Then we use Azure speech to text capability and English transcription to get my speech. Then use Azure Translate to get the speech into Japanese. And finally, applied neural text to speech technology so it sounded exactly like me just speaking Japanese. And the most amazing part, all of these technologies exist today. Okay, great. So until we saw the video, I was trying to open up, but it keeps on hanging out. So what's uh, what I I always like to show that video of um, of Julia White because she is showing exactly the power of. Uh, mixed reality plus artificial intelligence. And she mentioned something really interesting that the, all this technology is already uh, here today. So we just, I just show you guys that it's easy to consume the cognitive services and it's easy to create your mixed reality application. So one of the things that people ask me the most is, okay, I have a, I can create a hologram, I can create a panel, I can create uh, the things that you are showing, but I, it's difficult for me to one second until this I'm trying to open up this doesn't want to so but it's difficult for me to um, create a hologram I'm not a designer I don't want to learn how to design so um, the the mixed reality toolkit already comes with a lot of uh, hey. you don't want to see what's on my computer right now guys Okay, there we are. So um, a lot of these things already are part of our, of our, we can already build of those things, but I know it's difficult to create holograms, but the Mixed Reality Toolkit, as I mentioned, comes with a lot of controls and a lot of panels and a lot, a lot of things that you can already use and just consume and try to build your application. Um, let's, let's try to test the Louis app and then I want to show you something regarding creating a hologram. So what I'm having here is the same application that you guys just saw. Um, just going to focus a little bit. And the other thing that I have in here is a, a, a small robot at the background of the computer, but don't pay attention to it. Okay, so let's try to Yeah. Okay. So you can see here that it's already getting the information from Louis. In this case, I didn't have uh, the quote. Okay. So let's try to, as you guys saw in, in here, we don't have, let's go back in here. We don't have anything like that in here, but we have, for example, press reset button. So let's try to see for you. Let's see if this one is getting the information in here. This is supposed to be showing me the okay. So you can see here that I already have that quote that I just said to my Unity application on my machine. So 
Let's try to speak up and uh, indicate that we want to press the button to see which one is the result that we get. Hopefully, guys, it doesn't. There we go. And as you can see, you could just listen to it. Press reset button. Okay, great. So we got in there. So we have all the information in here, in there. We have the query, we have the top intent, the press button, we have the scores, we have the entities, everything for us to work with Lewis, even in our mixed reality application. So there is nothing that stops us from working with AI in our mixed reality application. Then one, a couple of things before leaving you guys. Um, one second. Is okay. There we go. Is this so? I was talking about the holograms that sometimes it's difficult to create different holograms. But right now, I was talking with Nick and um, he was covering. Uh, I was talking before getting in here that I'm streaming from an Azure Connect device. So right now, what we just saw in there was Julia. Uh, with a hologram that was created um, by a Kinect. So she's just mentioned that the hologram was rendered in real time, speaking Japanese with her own voice. So how did she do it? So she used the mixed reality technology to create the hologram and render it. You could see the use of voice command when she said, start rendering to launch the hologram. Then they used Azure speech to text capability in English transcriptions to get her speech, then use Azure Translate to get her speech in Japanese. And finally, applied neural, net, neural text to speech technology so it's sounding exactly like her. You can now understand the power of the combination of artificial intelligence with mixed reality. So do you want to know why I used that video to explain that power? Basically, as I mentioned, because right now we have everything to do it. In this short video that I have in here, I managed to create a hologram from myself using my Azure Connect. So it's not that difficult to even think of putting a hologram of yourself speaking in another, in another language in another country. It's not that far away. It's not that diffi difficult to, realize, to do right now. And finally, I want you guys to see a short video that can make you understand well everything is going from now on into the future from my point of view. So Baby X is a lifelike simulation of a toddler. Hey, are you excited to be here? She's actually seeing me through the web camera. She's listening through the microphone. Ooh, yeah. Baby X is about exploring the nature of how would we build a digital consciousness if it's possible. We don't know if it's possible, but we're chipping away at that problem. Hey, baby. Hey. Problem is an understatement for what Mark's chipping away at. His vision of the future is one where human and machine cooperate. And the best way to achieve that, he thinks, is to make AI as lifelike as possible. So these are all driven by neural networks. The neural network is a virtual, much simpler version of the human brain. The brain is the most complex system in our body. It's got 85 billion neurons, each of which fire nonstop, receiving, processing, and sending information. Baby X's brain is nowhere near as complex, but that's the goal. Instead of neurons, it's got nodes. The more the nodes are exposed to, the more they learn about. Thank you for granting access to your microphone. It's good to hear you. Today, most avatars are basically glorified customer service reps. Rest assured, your health is my primary concern. They can answer simple questions and give scripted responses. I love helping our customers, so I'm keen to keep learning. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. OK, go. So we have to capture all the textures of their face, the geometry of their face, big gnashy teeth how their face deforms with all the different facial expressions. How about a kiss? You can do with my eyes closed, because I don't kiss with my eyes open. Able to synthesize the sort of feel that you're interacting with Will. So Tia, I've got some stuff to hear. We've got 16 variations. 16 variations. 
we take the voice data that we've got and then we can enable the digital version of Will to say all kinds of different things. Here's the forecast. Yo, check out the forecast. Yo, check out the weather and shit. Here's the weather. <laughs> check out the weather. Yeah, about to make it rain. Poke out your tongue. <laughs> Tell me about growing up in Los Angeles. I was born and raised in Oyo Heights, which is west of East Los Angeles, which is east of Hollywood, just east of downtown. Should it sound exactly like me? Nope. Should it sound a bit robotic? Yes. It should. For my mom. <laughs> so guys, uh, finally, and that's it. I'm saying goodbye with this. It's, it's important to, uh, to see the potential that is in here. So there, there was these holograms that were displayed on, on Las Vegas. I think it was last year that everyone was talking, oh, there are holograms that are speaking to people. That's not that far away from being true. That's not so far away from being able to, for us to develop it. And finally, I created a small uh, hologram in here. So I believe you guys probably know him, uh, his PB-8. And I talked to him some words, um, say, I love you. Oh, it's not going to work now. I love you. <laughs> so he already understands a couple of words, a couple of phrases, but I need still to speak to him like pretty calmly and pretty clear. And my English is sometimes not that good, but he al he's already like, um, trying to understand what I'm speaking and trying to understand what I'm saying. So as, as I said, just take a, a look at it and enjoy with it. And if you guys need help, you can, you have my contact information in there. I'm more than willing to help you guys. Uh, so that's it from my end. I don't know if there is any questions. <coughs> Hi, Chris. Hey. Very great session, and I really loved BB-8 in my interaction. <laughs> I was pretty sure that you would. <laughs> oh yeah, being a big Star Wars fan myself, so uh, I don't see very specific questions, but I do have one. Like, how much I've, I've been doing some Poffrey uh, programming in the in, well, way younger times. Um, <laughs> it's like ages ago. Um, and it took me a bit of uh, ramping up. So uh, how much time did you spend actually on, on learning all this stuff? Not that much. I started uh, work. I actually started with the Azure Kinect last year. And we think it was on August that mm -hmm. my mentor from Redmond, Guadalupe Jasuso, she works in Microsoft Research. She sent it to me and I started uh, investigating with Azure Kinect and then I started uh playing around with mixed reality toolkit um luckily it's not that hard to learn and <laughs> uh, yeah so the the difficult thing for me right now is that since this is something that is evolving so fast the mixed reality toolkit is still in development so mm -hmm. it's changing a lot so sometimes what you build the one day the other day doesn't work and that that kind of things happens but i truly believe that this is going to be uh it's going to be even as soon as possible it's going to be closer to us than what mm -hmm. we expect so okay cool it's not, it's not that hard yeah do you need special hardware for it or no, I'm actually just running. That's what happens with Unity today. I'm running mm -hmm. a, a normal computer and, a, and it's an i7. So it's not that much. It has eight RAM, uh, not, nothing that much fancier than that. So it's okay, not cool. that complex and it doesn't require that much. Uh, it also helps me to build and port the applications to Android and iOS. So most of the videos I displayed, I show about mm -hmm. the things that I'm doing are on iOS. Okay, cool. Great. All right. Uh, I'm just getting like a lot of applause uh, from the from the audience. Impressive, excellent Ivana, excellent demo. So it seems <laughs> that people really liked it besides me. So that's awesome. Great, great. Okay, well, thank great. you for having me. Thank you for having you. And well. I really hope you can do more demos with BB-8 and then make like something with R2-D2 uh, into it as well. 
<laughs> I will consider that. I will consider. Next time I will I will try to impress you with that. <laughs> okay, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Bye. Okay. <laughs> bye bye, Chris. For everyone, for who everyone, upskilling, upskilling, we have something very special: the Summer Learner Badger, and you can earn one for joining this event. Scan the QR code, which will appear on your screen, and claim your badger. Azure Heroes is a Microsoft program for recognizing community efforts.